What's up, everyone? Welcome into this episode of Beers with Mears. I'm Hannah Mears, and today I will be joined shortly by Christian Coons. He's the long snapper for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But what's even cooler about that is he's a homegrown Pittsburgh guy. So he's back playing in Pittsburgh for his hometown NFL team. But it took a lot for him to get here, and he shares a lot of that journey with us today, which is really cool. He played football at Duquesne, which is a local college here in Pittsburgh, and then also was a linebacker in college. So he had to make that shift once he got to the NFL to eventually, after injuries, um, change to a long snapper. And it's worked out for him so far, but there's been a lot of bumps and twists and turns in the road along the way. We also get into discussion about the NBA and an NBA athlete that he used to actually play with in high school and we talk all things Steelers football and some fun along the way as well so definitely stay tuned for all of that for the segment of win or lose we booze um I'm just going to share a percentage with you guys right now I'm about 45 percent since March 29th now the last time we talked I was on a hot streak I've hit a bit of a slump But we will be back nonetheless um, now that the NBA playoffs are back and things are in a little bit more of a swing and we see some patterns and trends and things that are happening. Um, So I'm excited about that. But yeah, 45%, not my best. I will definitely be drinking to that um, to forget about the fact that that is happening. But with betting, it's very humbling at times. You definitely go through some ups and downs and it's important to share all of that with you because I'm sure everybody out there watching this who has betting um, at any point in your life have bet on something, you you feel that you're there with me. For my I'll drink to that segment, I want to give a shout out to Christian Kuntz's significant other, Heather. She was actually selected as a 2023 Pittsburgh's 50 finest honoree. So what that means is that she will be raising money for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, which is an event that recognizes outstanding young professionals in the Pittsburgh community. So she has the ability now to really make a difference in the community by raising money through different events and finding different fundraisers, but ultimately just taking donations from different people to support um, the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation and really help in the vital support of of research and medical and educational programs to try to really um, make a difference and find a cure for cystic fibrosis. So shout out to Heather. Congratulations to you on being one of Pittsburgh's 50 finest. Christian and I also talk a little bit more about this towards the end of the episode today. For my beer review this week, I'm not going to review a beer. I'm going to talk about a beer that I feel like I should be reviewing, but don't have on hand because it is sold out. So here's my review of the Iron City beer mixed with Turner's Tea. Now, if you haven't heard about it, it's a big deal here in Pittsburgh right now. Turner's Tea is a very Pittsburgh thing. And of course, they made it now into an alcoholic beverage. However, Pittsburghers go nuts for anything Pittsburgh, at least to try it once. And if it's something Pittsburgh, they feel like they've got to get it, right? It's out of stock right now because Pittsburghers said they have to get it. I have heard so many mixed reviews about this, good and bad both. And I need to get my hands on one of these. I can't find them because clearly they're out of stock right now. But if you out there have tried one, I want to hear your beer reviews or twisted tea type of review. This is a Turner's tea review though. Um, I'm sure it's similar to the twisted teas out there and the spiked Arnold Palmer's and whatnot. Um, But I'm very curious to see what people have to think because it's an Iron City beer iced tea. I see apostrophe D tea. Um, So it's mixed with the Turner's tea and it says it's the sweet lemony goodness of Turner's premium iced tea meets the classic taste of Iron City beer for the most refreshing drink these three rivers have ever seen. I don't know if it's true. We will see. That's the description. Let me know what your review of this is if you can get your hands on this. But without further ado, our hometown kid, Christian Coons. Welcome to Beers with Mirrors. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you for having me. I'm sorry. I have my water. I don't have any beer. <sighs> it's okay. I know that off-season regimen sort of back in swing of things today. Uh, yes. The Steelers went back at the time where we're recording this. So how did it feel getting back in the building today with everyone? It was good. I mean, it's always great. I've been I'm obviously from Pittsburgh and um, I'm there. I'm here training. So I'm there seeing the guys that are in and out. But it, it's always great when everyone comes back. You know, we're all excited. It's, I don't know, it's like the first day at school again. Like. You see all your buddies and everyone's all, all pumped up and it's just a good feeling. It's fun. 
what is that first day back like for anyone who doesn't know like what the NFL process is like you're not obviously getting in pads and going on a field right now but you're sort of getting everyone back into the swing of things what's this regimen contain for you um it's more so like there's different phases in the off season so this is the start of phase one which there's certain rules in the CBA um where there's not a lot of any coaches on the field we're just allowed to work for these first two weeks or three weeks I'm not really positive on like the dates of them but um, these first two or three weeks, no coaches. It's just strength and conditioning, like getting your bodies acclimated, basically. And there's like an hour, like some sort of time limit on how many hours we're allowed to spend in there a day. Once again, this is the CBA. This isn't me. Um, <laughs> and then it then it gets into phase two, where I think coaches are allowed to interact with us after two weeks. They're on the field for us for an hour. And then phase three starts OTAs, where helmets are on. Um, practices obviously two hours and meetings so there's different levels different levels there was a bunch of new guys added last season too obviously young players like Kenny and George Pickens as well and then guys added in this sort of free agency period uh, before the draft so what is the team like personality wise this year because last year you sort of all had to get acclimated together this younger group now you're here what was the vibes of everybody in that room um, I mean, I feel like we we were a close, like knitted group last year and, and um, there has been a lot of change and I feel like that's normal in an NFL locker room, like guys are going to go different directions, um, but I really can't get a sense yet. I know everyone's going to get along. I've met a lot of the guys and know some of them that signed. Um, everyone will fit in, you know, it, it's, you either, you either fit in or like you just... I don't know. I feel like when, if a guy comes in the locker room, like he's bound to fit in, like, I don't know. It's Especially coming from, we're, fr yeah. we're friendly here, right? Exactly. And like our locker room with, with coach T and everything, like it's a great atmosphere that like definitely a, a player wants to play in. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. do you feel any, be... do you feel any obligation being a Pittsburgh born and raised guy to like introduce everybody to what being a Yinzer is like? Um, <laughs> No, majority of them, like, no. Every, like, the guys that aren't from Pittsburgh, they still know, like, Steeler fans are Steeler fans. Like, we go on the road, and it's like a home game. So, like, people know, like, how gritty the city is and, like, how diehard fans are. Like, we go to Miami, and our game was, like, full of – it was like a home – like, some of these games are, like, home games. It's crazy. So, and guys know it, too, like, around the league. They all know it. Yeah, it's always cool to see when guys get picked up by the Steelers or they get drafted and they come and they're like, oh, I can't wait to be a Steeler. Like just to get to experience that mm -hmm. fan base, even just a short period of time, like getting to know what being a Pittsburgh Steeler is like. 100%. Even like like Akersher, everyone knows that venue and knows they're playing the Pittsburgh Steelers. And, you know, it's just it's just like a legendary franchise. And I'm not just saying that because I'm from Pittsburgh. Like people outside of the city truly are like, yeah, it's the Pittsburgh Steelers. Absolutely. Everyone knows what to expect when you're walking exactly. into Steeler country, but yeah. to get to where you are now. So for those of you who don't know, and you're just getting on the Christian Coons train, he is the long snapper <laughs> for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but you weren't always the long snapper. You actually played linebacker, which is crazy because the Steelers have very good linebackers as well. So if you ever needed to step in, you know, we know we've got these skills. So even yeah. when they're not looking for linebackers, they're finding linebackers somehow, but what was your journey like being a linebacker? Because you went to college in Duquesne to, to play linebacker, had some injuries. So you were pretty good, not, you know, by the way, um, doing that. So pretty good <laughs> defensively. Um, what was that transition like for you and knowing that you had to eventually make that shift? It was, it was obviously tough, like a bit of humiliating at times, like too, because I don't know, I came from, I had a good college career and I, I truly thought like I could be, I could be an NFL linebacker. I could play in the NFL as a linebacker. And then um, it was obviously very short lived. And um, kind of after that, I, I came to the realization, like it's going to be tough to make it as an undrafted free agent linebacker at Duquesne, you know, that, that got rookie mini camp invites and not a true like camp invite or anything. Um, and I did long snap in college for, for a year, my fifth year, and my 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 head coach Jerry Schmidt at, at Duquesne, who's still there now, he would he would tell me like I was always the backup there, like I was one of the only ones that I feel like could do it as a backup, 
and we had a good guy that did it for years. And um, Jerry, Jerry would always tell me like, you should take this more seriously. Like this was back in college. He's telling me my sophomore year, junior year, he's like, I'm telling you, like, th- if you can tackle and play defense like you do, and then you transition to long snap, he's like, this is where you're, this is, this is what's going to be your ticket. And I didn't listen to him. Um, <laughs> he knows that. And I told him and cause I was probably stubborn thinking I could play linebacker. And um, once I got cut from new England after a day, I went on a workout to Green Bay and there was a guy from Duquesne, John Wojciechowski, who's just like on their scouting staff up there. I think he's like director. Of, he's a, he's pretty high up. Um, he made me snap in front of them. And after that, they're like, dude, this is what this is what you have to work on. Like, you're pretty raw at it. This is what you got to do. And so that was me. just like a natural talent that you somehow just had. It came kind of easy. I I wouldn't say it came. I wouldn't say it comes easy. Like, <laughs> Um, but I guess I, I even did it when I was back, at, like when I started playing football in fifth grade, I was the long snapper. It wasn't, it wasn't like for our South Hill Saints, like little Catholic school league, like I was long snapper. So in high school, I did it. I guess I could just do it. And then once I learned kind of the technique and started to really train myself, I really climbed up the, the pedal school. So come on, baby. It's definitely, um, it's definitely crazy to think that you like transitioned in the NFL. Like most people are transitioning in college. You see that frequently. Um, yeah. And then you see it, you see a couple of guys here and there once they get to the league coaches shift them around positionally, but to go from an entirely different thing to it being a specialist, which being a specialist, people think, you know, oh, they're, you know, just a specialist. They're just mm. a, the, the small technicalities that go into it and, and you're one snap away from ruining you know the the kicker you're responsible Again. for other people out there yeah. as well so how hard was it to sort of hone in on that and be a long snapper at the nfl level like that's taking a whole different elite step yeah i mean it, <clears throat> it's been it's definitely like a, a it was a big difference for me more so in like how to adjust playing the game because i was so used to playing defense playing game like playing the whole game um, and then going to long snapping and it's like, I play one plan and I might not play for like an hour, an hour and a half. I'm like standing there, like, well, I, like as a fan watching. So like, it, and I remember like my rook, oh, I, can't, I don't even know what my true rookie year was because I've been like, bounced so, around a lot. So many, <laughs> yeah. So many places and like cut and like work jobs during seasons that I, I can't even remember. But the one preseason, I think it was 2019 when I was with the Steelers and Jordan Berry was still here. Um, we were playing in Carolina and it was like one of the first games that it was, was the first game that I was ever long snapping in the NFL. So like a huge moment, like you get game film, like astronomical moment, like huge. If you get game film as a snapper in the NFL, whether it's preseason or not, it doesn't really matter. Um, and Barry had to like, tell me on the sidelines, he's like, dude, like, are you done? Like you got, I'm not catching another snap. He like walked away. He's like, you've snapped like 300 balls today. Like, and that's like ridiculous. Like now I'm like on a, like I couldn't, I was so like either ner- I was nervous and like, I didn't know how to prepare for it. So like I would be snapping when we were on offense. I'd be snapping when we were on defense. I'd be, we'd snap an extra point. I'd come to the sideline and I'd sit down for a second. And then I'd be like, Hey, can I get a couple? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with my hands. Like I don't know yeah. what to do. I was like, yeah. So <laughs> it was, it was, it, it was tough adjusting that way. Um, but to kind of, you just figure it I figured it out as you go along I'm still figuring out like I'm not I still I'm happy with like my routine and everything and how I feel during games but like I'm always trying to get a little better at whether you know I I take more time to sit down on the bench and warm up and whatever you know whatever it may be I'm still always trying to do something a little bit better what were some of the what were some of the most difficult things you had to learn to perfect the game of long snapping? Um, I, I would say like more so transit, like the difference in college and pros is pros. We have like, we have to block. I'm not saying that like college snappers don't have to block because some teams like still run a tight punt formation. And, you know, they ask the long snapper that he has the responsibility to block, but um, more so the blocking, like you don't have time to follow like, you have time to follow through and, and do things, but everything's sped up. Your, your, your release is sped up. Your, your mind feels sped up. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be, but like everything is 
in fast forward and you need to learn how to like hone that in where you're still throwing the same ball and blocking somebody or having the responsibility to block right or feel the pressure coming from one way and lean and there's a lot there's a lot of stuff that goes through that people are <laughs> people are just like oh you have the you have the best job in the world like there is a lot of pressure like you know my job I rely on Presley and Boz as they rely on me like those are my guys and our jobs are all connected in some way so What's your dynamic like with those two? Because I had Blake Gilligan on uh, a few weeks ago. He's obviously the punter for the New Orleans Saints and we Mm -hmm. went to Penn State together. And we talked about so many intricacies. Like he was talking about, you know, whether you're holding for somebody and then there's the kicker and then, you know, his relationship with his long snapper has to be like muscle memory to a T and knowing where you like it and what conditions. So what's your relationship like with your core members that you're working together for? Oh, us three are, we're very close. I mean, we're, te- we text every, like every day we're in a group texting, talking about something, golfing, like if, when, when everyone's back, like we'll be golfing a couple times a week. Um, I mean, we're together nonstop, like training camp, our rooms are next to each other. We eat together. Our schedules are the same. Like it's like a t- it's like a, a vacation with your boys for like four weeks in a row. Like it's like, it's, 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 it's fun. I mean, but we're all very close and like we all get along really well and I feel like we mesh very well. So like that definitely helps us on the field for sure. You, Harvard or Boz, who's the who's gonna win the masters if you guys had a tournament against each other? I mean, I, I wish I did this podcast last year, but I would say <laughs> I would say me, but Boz Boz definitely he got he has me right now. Okay, so there's you last year were the better golfer, now he is. I wouldn't even say I was the better golfer last year. I would just say that Boz like didn't play golf. Like he, he wasn't serious about it yet, mm-hmm. but he was still like raw talented, like a kicker, like very functional, like move, like it's just smooth, like just smooth. Uh-huh. And my swings, like I'm trying to like crush the ball. Like, <laughs> like happy Gilmore swing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like in heat. So and now I think he's been playing a lot more and he's been sending us his scores. He, he would definitely get me right now. Are you the type of guy who your games like just hit the ball as far as I can and just make sure it's as close to the pin as possible? I used to be. I used to be. <laughs> now now I'm just like, just try to hit it straight and keep it in play. Like that's all, like that's all I'm trying to do. Just keep it, hit it straight and just keep it in play. Right. Yeah. Um. I went I, the other, I went golfing the other day and I actually had to yell four for the first time. I don't know how it happened, but I hit the ball and sliced oh, yeah. it completely 90 degrees right <laughs> Yeah, I don't know where it went, so I need to hit the driving range again for just a little bit. Everyone always, everyone always thinks it's funny call like calling for, or hearing for, but that's a real thing. I've been hit a couple times on the course, like a couple of public courses. I I was hit the first time I ever golfed with my brother, and got hit right in the leg. I was hit at Quicksilver Golf Club. Not to call out any golf clubs, but but I mean I love that course. Not, if not they want to give but, a couple free rounds for that. <laughs> exactly and a guy hit me hit me on three right in the leg he called four too I just I didn't know where it was coming from and I like ducked and it just I left a bruise like this thing on my leg it was crazy oh yeah I know the guys beside us that I almost hit turned around and they were not happy I only hit their cart thank goodness but I was oh. like oh need to take a little bit of a break yeah my boyfriend wasn't happy with me for that one I don't think he wants to be on the course with me for a while <laughs> he's generally he's generally really patient but I think that one broke him <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was the tipping point for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm more of like, just give me a beer every once in a while. I'll hit a couple holes. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. I mean, maybe no more driving, just putting. Yeah, yeah. So. I'll just yeah, I'll play the best ball. You hit the drives. We'll play a little scramble. That'll be great. Um, yeah. No, seriously though, golf is is no joke. It's probably uh, it's one of like the harder sports to pick up. So if anyone's good at it, like props to them. Super. Yeah. Super like hand-eye coordination, everything. Yeah. Oh, so Boz is a smooth golfer. All right. Well, there's a tournament yeah. out there. We'll be looking at yeah, eye roll, I guess. <laughs> I know he is. It's like, why are you good at, how are you good at that too? Yeah. It's not fair when people are like really good at everything, but I mean, it's not fair that you were a good linebacker and now like an NFL long snapper too. So, but it took a while to get to this point, right? You mentioned bouncing around a lot. So how did you mentally handle that when it was like, you get invited to a team, you get cut, you get invited, you get cut. And I mean, it's what the, the Patriots, Broncos, Jaguars, XFL stint for just a brief moment, then Steelers, then not Steelers, then Steelers again. So all that back and forth, how did you really handle that as a person? Um, 
it, it's de- it was definitely tough, but like. I wouldn't say that like it affected me that much. I I was lucky enough to still live with my mom at the time and like she was very supportive of it and I was able to, you know, work do my side jobs that I was doing at the time to pay the bills that I had. Um so like that alone like let me continue to carry on my dream and was very obviously like beneficial for me. I was home training, working, like I wasn't feeling stressed. So, um, but like getting cut and getting going on workouts, like there was a time where I was I like, like during the COVID year where I went on like six workouts in a row and you had to have three COVID tests before you were even allowed to step in their building to work out. So I was there for three days and in, in Indy, in Denver. Um, where else was I? Um, I'm like forgetting half the place I was, maybe Tampa for one of them. Houston was one of them because I went right from Houston to Indy. Oh, and then New York Giants. That was another one. But like you were in the hotel for three days, then you'd work out and snap 10 balls for them to tell you, yeah, we're not going to sign you. So it's like, I just gave up three days of my life. I could have tested. Like, yeah, frustrating. And um, there were definitely times where like I would, would be like, dude, this is my last, this is my last time. If I'm not on a team, mm-hmm. then I'm done. And then I would get signed. And then I'd, I'd get cut again. I'd be like, if I'm not on a team by this date, I'm done. And then I'd like get signed a week before my deadline was. Like, it was crazy. It was crazy. That's, it was like God's, uh, yeah. So. That's insane. Was, I, I can only imagine like the, the mental capacity you, you had to have to be able to continue to keep pushing forward. Because what were some of the like other jobs you had to do in between that? Because I'm sure that was kind of frustrating as well. Because when somebody hires you, they expect you to be there. And then you're like, well, wait, I have to go to camp. So. What were some of the things you were doing outside of um, so like my main job I was putting in I was putting in uh, pet fence, dog fences, pet fences, elect, electric pet fences mm-hmm. uh, for Pittsburgh pet fence. I'm gonna give him a marketing shout out for sure. Pittsburgh right now. pet fence. Yes, my man Ed Fogarty, um, the owner of the company, a good friend of mine, like I I can't thank that guy enough. You know, he was he would understand I'd be in the middle of putting in the fence for him and I'd have to go down and take a COVID test for the Steelers and wait around before they sign me back to the P squad or whatever. And I'd have to leave on a Thursday to go work out like randomly stuff. And he was, you know, generous enough to let me work for him for like almost full time, sometimes here and there. Um, for those years, I, I valeted downtown Capitol Grill and Morton's. Mm-hmm. Um, I drove for a luxury car service. Um, like driving like limousines, picking people up at the airport, driving them downtown. I actually have a funny story about that. I got released by the Steelers in 19 and I ended up, I was driving for the, for um, Tony Williams car service. And I had to pick up Vance McDonald's father-in-law from, from the airport and drive him out to Vance's place out in um, Ligonier. Yeah. And I didn't, the guy, we just got to talking and he asked me like what I was doing. This is my full-time job. And I explained to him and he was like, oh, well, I'm Vance, McD- I'm Van- you know, Vance McDonald. And I was like, yeah, I know Vance. I was just teammates with Vance like three days ago. So I end up driving, getting out there and like, I drop off the stuff. I open the door for him and Vance comes walking out of his house and he's like, Christian? He's like, what the hell? I'm like in my suit, like my, my, my limousine outfit. And he's like, what the hell are you doing? I'm like, I'm working. Like, what, what do you mean? And he's like, oh, he's, he's like, that's awesome. Like, he's like, you're going to get in. Like Vance was so, Vance is just a cool dude. Like, oh, stand up dude. But that was like a cool, humiliating at the same time moment, you know, mm-hmm. like kind of brought me back to reality. Like, oh, it's tough. It's very interesting to hear that you had that sort of experience. Um, and it's, I think more people need to hear that side of it because everyone just sees you at the peak. Um, in the NFL, playing for the Steelers, living your dream, but they don't realize all the little jobs you were doing throughout the time you were trying to make a team. Yeah, like uh, people, half the guys have, like more than half the guys have stories like like mine or similar to mine that like everybody in there has some sort of journey or some sort of adversity like that they had to overcome, which makes like, that's what makes a locker room like so cool. Like these mm-hmm. dudes, some of these guys, and, and Coach T says it like, we don't care where you came from. Like mm-hmm. if you're here, we know you can play. Like 
no one's asking well, how'd you get here well, from there like if you're in that locker room you can play when when guys talk to you then different guys about how to get there and, and being a specialist now and being on the Steelers in the NFL what are some of the things that you're like really proud to tell them about yourself about whether it's your journey or where you are now um I don't know I'm pretty proud I, I am pretty proud to say that like I, I played at Duquesne guys on the mm -hmm. team were like we're like guys that I'll just meet or whatever that just signed um if we're talking at lunch or whatever like they would be like oh where'd, where'd you play ball at like what year is this for you and I'll be like oh this will be my third or fourth year with the team I was one year on the practice and they're like oh where'd you where'd you play college at I'm like Duquesne and they're like what <laughs> like where I'm like yeah the right at, like this the Duquesne that's right here in the city and they're like are you serious I was like yeah, and they're like, dude, that's pretty sweet. So like that, mm -hmm. I feel like it's cool for me to kind of not brag about, but just it's cool to come from a smaller school and make it to to the NFL. You do you remember the first day you became a Pittsburgh Steeler in a more permanent way? Y yes, from a more permanent way. Yeah, I never, I didn't really feel permanent until I guess, you know, I didn't, I still don't feel permanent. You know, like mm -hmm. it still hasn't really hit me, honestly. So stuff to say permanent but because I always have that fear not right. fear but like I know how it is I've been now I've been cut 12 times mm -hmm. like, so for me to, <gasps> it's like, so it's it's different like coming from I don't know coming from where I was getting cut that many times knowing that it can happen to anybody at any time so like you're never truly safe mm-hmm but when you actually got to tell your parents that news and everyone in your family that you were going to be playing for the Steelers, I'm sure everybody was super pumped about it, right? All you Pittsburghers. <laughs> oh, yes. Everybody was, and everyone's still pumped about it. Like, I mean, I, my brother was just over for lunch earlier and he was like, I think it's, I still think it's hilarious. Like I was signing a picture for one of his friend's son little sons mm -hmm. and my brother's like i think this is hilarious like this is so weird You're, why are you signing this why am i getting like your signature on this thing <laughs> like i'm, I'm like I, yeah i don't know like if that it? ever yeah. gets i don't know if that ever gets normal for people right it's like mm, no. i'm not really sure <laughs> yeah it's definitely it's definitely like a moment where you're like people are like hey can i get a picture with you and it's like right here? are you sure you mean me yeah <laughs> yeah right? so but it's been it's been it's been nothing but you know a dream come true to play here so I'm very excited about it. I always love seeing like Pittsburghers get to come back to Pittsburgh and I mean I know Kenny wasn't a true like born Pittsburgher but he came and played at Pitt and then getting to see the welcome that he got in the stadium like it just makes mm -hmm. being a Steeler so cool and like being from a, a fan from that perspective it's really cool too to see all of those <laughs> moments and um I think it's cool too because I'm from around here and you went to Char Valley um, and you played with somebody who's also at the, in the peak of their career in the NBA with TJ McConnell, um, yes. in college. So I saw <laughs> that one of the games you were repping his Jersey and then he repaid the favor and wore your Jersey. So how cool was that to see a guy that, you know, you just grew up with in high school playing high school ball. And now you're both able to wear each other's jerseys playing for like your dream jobs. Yeah, that it's crazy. And he thinks what I do, like we'll have wine nights or whatever. Um, his season just ended. I think he's on vacation. He's coming back, whatever. But like he thinks what I do is crazy. And that what, you know, it all, it all is crazy when we, in the grand scheme of things, when we look back at it, but like he thinks what I'm, I, I'm doing is absolutely insane. And I'm, at times I'm like, dude, you, you, you had a jump ball versus Kobe. Like there's a, your background on your phone is a jump ball against Kobe. And then like, Kobe's press game interview like you're getting switched off on LeBron like I can't I couldn't imagine like some of the guy you know the NBA Here's your not. assignment today guarding LeBron James yeah <laughs> exactly like on a on a pick and roll so we'll, we'll just have conversations and we'll you know we'll just shoot the shit on like stories and like stuff that ha like locker room stuff anything like plane rides like anything that's that that's good for a good story and like he wants to know how things are run like on our end and mm -hmm. I'm kind of interested how the NBA like travel schedule like how do they they play 82 games it's just so different but so alike in a sense because we're both professional athletes yeah what are some of the most interesting stories or an interesting story that he's told you about the NBA that like you immediately think of when you think of TJ McConnell TJ probably doesn't even know this but LeBron, because like, I'll have my Indiana Pacers like um, notifications on my phone because I 
I, I'll Absolutely. check the box. Yeah, I check the box score. Like I'm check. I won't watch these games if I don't get it, but I'll be checking the box score every game. Like looking for what did he do tonight? Like oh nice, he had he had a triple double off the bench. Like mm-hmm. this is crazy. Um, but like I'm pretty sure LeBron in one presser like was like yeah I want to play with TJ McConnell. So I'm like dude, this is crazy. That's insane. Dude. So yeah. you could say through like you know what is it like the 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 test of like lines it's like the six generations or whatever that's called yeah that if he played with lebron that technically you played with lebron right <laughs> technically yeah because yeah, i played with t in high school so yeah then i would technically be lebron's teammate essentially yeah, basically yeah. same thing yeah. <laughs> what are some of the stories you have playing basketball with tj mcconnell in high school because he was sort of he was pretty legendary uh, for people who don't know, like high school basketball mm-hmm. in Pittsburgh. He's still a household name if people follow high school basketball. The McConnell name in general is a household name around these parts of basketball. So what were some of the things you remember about being his teammate? Oh, man. Our, so T was two years older than me. He was a, I was a sophomore. He was a senior. Um, that was probably our best team, probably one of the be- best teams ever at our high school. Probably was, and I'm going to make a bold statement, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And any of the any other alumni that want to question it can, <laughs> they can question if they want, but um, I don't know. I just, I was a sophomore and I, and I start, I was lucky enough to start um, on that team. And I just remember like the one game he scored 52 at, at um, West Mifflin. There was a time where like in the third quarter, I would get a rebound, we'd outlet it, we'd pass it to him. And like, I was not even going down to that side of the floor. I was just staying on our half court because he was pissed. And I knew he was scoring every time, every time, anytime he got the ball, you weren't getting it. And he was scoring. And I think he scored like 39 in the second half of a high school game, which is like crazy. You're scoring 39 in the half. Yeah. Because I think, I think he had like, I want to say he had maybe 13 at halftime or 14 at halftime something and then just went off and like I'll, I'll never forget that's that. insane yeah so or, or just he was such a good like everybody on the court got better when you were on tj's team like even in mm-hmm. practice like we did red versus blue and whoever's team he was on like even even like the joe schmo off the bench was making threes i'm yeah. like this guy's making getting open looks for him and this guy's making threes he he can't even guard anybody he's playing mm-hmm. So, defensively too like to prepare for playing tj mcconnell in high school i'm sure those defensive assignments were like forget about the guy off the bench if tj has the ball in his hands that's who you're worried about so everybody's getting cool. open looks because but tj's still scoring so <laughs> yeah they would double they would double team when people would fa- everyone everyone would face guard him. it didn't matter he still scored to, still averaged like 33 his senior year um boxing one he would just be he, he was just really good. He was obviously really good now, but yeah, it was, it was, people will still say to this day, like watching him in high school was absolutely crazy. Yeah. Like, it really was. Like there's eight, knowing- minutes in, eight minutes in a quarter, 32 minutes in a game, and he'd be scoring 35, 40, 50 points every game. That's insane. It's insane. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's, he's definitely one for the record books here around Pittsburgh, but all right. So you're a basketball guy. I hear this argument all the time. Um, specifically, I think I saw it most recently with a guy with Pat Fryermuth, um talking about basketball and who he would beat. So if you had to put together a basketball team, you're one of them, obviously the other four Pittsburgh Steelers that you'd want on your team, who would they be? Wow. I just had this argument with, with um, Cam Hayward. <laughs> He Cam said Cam to, well, I don't even know if I'm taking Cam. And if he sees this, he he literally told me he was a five star too. So I'm gonna have to take Cam. I'm okay. gonna have to take him just because uh, you know he claims he's a five star. It's you know he's a big presence down there. I'll take Cam. I think I'm taking GP. Okay. I think. Man, this is you tough. got you got one of your below guys. Are you are you going to be like a down low guy? Or are you going to be are you going to be a shooting guard? I'm gonna I'm gonna be a sh- I'm gonna be a shooting guard. You're gonna be a shooting, a shooting guard. guard. Okay, yeah, you yeah, got yeah. GP obviously probably like shooting guard. Yeah, I think I think George will be our three. I think I'd be our two. I think Cam okay. will be our five. So you need a four and a one. I think our four. Man, I don't know if it's a four. 
who else do you want I, down low? I mean, man, do, do I have, like, I think Pat, I think Pat. <laughs> do I have to, but I'm Pat. No, no, <laughs> Apparently gonna, he was pretty good in high school. I know for a fact he had to been good. Maybe Gentry. I think I'm going Pat, Cam, Pat, GP, me, and then point guard. Mm, this is going to be a tough one. This is your pilot here. Who's piloting this offense? Man, I'm trying to really think who's piling the offense. He's a good ball handler. <laughs> I don't know. Spillane was, all, I know Spillane's on our team anymore, but Spillane was always dribbling the basketball, and he, he did have some handles in there. Interesting. I would say, I'm, I might go I might go with Deontay. I just feel like Deontay got some hoop game. He's super athletic. He probably can go around anybody he wants to right add some speed add some speed there yeah. with him and george right I'll, I'll just go i'll go with deontay I'll go, the dbs are going to be uh, maybe minka Shh. yeah i'm missing some guys but we'll, we'll go we'll stick with deontay on oh, no, all right in the game of 1v1 who do you not want to go against in hoops um cam he's just gonna foul he's not even gonna play fair he's just gonna foul Cam's Cam's gonna cheat. Yeah, he's gonna cheat. He'll cheat <laughs> for sure. So and you want him on it. your team to cheat, but if it's one v one, it's not even fair. He's not even gonna play right. One hundred percent. I want him on my team to cheat and be physical and foul. But if I'm against them, I do not want to play him because he's gonna he's gonna foul and cheat. <laughs> so is this why the picture was tweeted about you from Cam the other day, saying how tall does everyone think Christian Kuntz is? Yeah, because we had the same hoop argument, and I said that I was a top ten hooper on the team, and he said, "No chance. You're like five foot nine. What are you bringing to the table? Are you playing guard? Are you playing center? Like, what are you?" I'm like, "No, I'm a shooter." And then I went out and I proved it on his hoop court, and there's vid and there's video evidence. We need the video evidence. It's on his phone, and he won't give it to me because I was I was a flamethrower that day, and he doesn't want to admit use. that. No, he doesn't want to admit it. And it was like a game of 1v1, or did he just make you go out there and, like, prove what you could do? We just – it was to prove it. Just go so out there ba and see. Basically, Cam Hayward's preparing in case this moment happens where he has to be the captain of a of a pickup game, and he's got to find his guys. He wants to know what he's working with. He knows now. He knows now. He knows. <laughs> and I didn't he see much now. from him, but I still drafted him. So. Oh, I love it. Has Cam – hey, has Cam asked you to go on his podcast yet? He has not. We're gonna start some beef. I don't First know, off, is, we need we need we need a pickup game, and then we need the podcast to like sideline there for him. I I'm not playing him in pickup unless he's on my team. I'm dead serious. <laughs> I won't play. I'll end up someone will end up hurt bad. Oh, uh, Cam seems like a great guy though. Like I always hear so many stories about him, just even like this, and just and messing with guys and having fun and being such a leader. So, what type of presence does he bring to the team overall? Oh, I mean, everyone in there like obviously knows Cam, everyone in the league knows Cam Hayward and looks up to Cam Hayward, like um, not even for what he does on the field, but off the field. Um, he's obviously around Pittsburgh, what he's done. And I've seen been seeing it for years, not since I've been a teammate. It's just cool. Like he's, he's just a normal per. He's a normal person that's mm -hmm. really damn good at football. Like, so, you know, he's, and he wants to help people and do his thing, but it's a, you know, it's a, it's like a big grizzly. I, I, I call, he's like a big teddy bear, a big teddy grizzly bear. Like he's got a mean streak to him, but you know, he, he is, he is loving and hilarious and joking and you know, it's just cam. And he will make you try out for his pickup team. So high yeah, expectations. He'll, he'll end up, he'll end up bullying someone, me, someone, some sort in some way to do something for him or something. <laughs> We're playing cards. You'll get bullied. The draft is just around the corner. So how excited are you to see who's going to be uh, walking into training camp in new uniforms for the Pittsburgh Steelers? I'm pumped. I mean, like, it always it, – it gets better each year. I feel like that you, you're a part of the team. Um, it's just interesting. Like, and I don't know how that is for other guys, but for me, like, I don't know. You, you, that's a guy that you're going to be spending time with that's going to be in the – you're, you're essentially working with. Like, I'm – not me personally, because like the guys that they're drafting in the first round, they're not going to be playing on 
most likely aren't going to be playing on punt or field goal mm -hmm. um, unless you know, an O lineman or what whatnot. But still, you're you're around these guys nonstop. You're with them. You see them. You're you know you've crossed them past in the hallway. So if you want a guy that you like his game and you think that he's going to be a good person when you meet him because you know in reality like no one wants an asshole in there. Everyone wants mm -hmm. just it's just a bunch of dudes that, want, that are hanging out playing football. So even kill right. Do you know? Exactly. Um, What's really exciting about being in Pittsburgh right now as well, the draft right around the corner, seeing, you know, everyone get back into the Steelers facility today. But the Pittsburgh Pirates have been exciting as well. And your guy, David Bednar, you know, big money closer out here. Some exciting games the past few weeks. I see you repping his jersey a lot. How excited are you about this this Buccos team right now? I tell everyone, I'm like, when this, this is a baseball town, like as much as it is a football town, obviously, like, the Pittsburgh Steelers, like it's a baseball town too. Like this team, this the fan base here for the Pirates is nuts. I was at the wild card game in 2000. Was that 15? When Johnny Cueto dropped the ball, like that was nuts. Like the, the bars were nuts. I was in college. Like everything, it was crazy. So like this team and the like, obviously PNC Park's unbelievable. So I just want them to you know be good, especially Dave. Like being another Pittsburgh guys from Mars and playing for the Pirates, and I hope they keep him here for a long time, which is cool. I mean, and he's the closer for the Pirates. Like, he's from here. Like As that's a hometown kid. Yeah, that's insane. crazy. Insane. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I got to ask him about that in the thing, and it was just, like, cool to hear about and just to see, you know, coming back and playing for your hometown has to be the coolest thing anyone could ever do, but – Everyone knows you now as the long snapper, a guy from Pittsburgh. But if you had to tell people, like, outside of your football persona, they even got to see a little bit of what you did. But what do you wish people knew more about you? The personality of Christian Coons. What do you wish people could see more about you? I, I don't know. I just feel like I wish people, maybe not so much for myself, but just every guy in there, like, they're just normal people, like, mm -hmm. And I've realized that, and like myself, obviously included, like I don't have to tell my friends that I'm normal, but like I'll have people that'll ask me, like, oh, what's, you know, what's he like? Like, is he this? Th I'm like, dude, he's just a normal guy that mm -hmm. plays football, and um, that's that's what they do. That's what we do for a living, and that just so happened to be it. But I'm I'm a yinzer. I'm just I'm I went to Duquesne. I'm I'm just a normal guy that likes to hang out and. <laughs> play football <laughs> so right that's, drink that's beer really yeah. have a wine night hit the golf course right yeah that's literally everything, that's everything <laughs> I like. golf ping pong i like ping pong but okay no pick no pick up hoops it's still a little too risky yeah it's gonna risky, be like a but... retirement thing maybe for everybody yeah i play video games here and there i haven't been playing in a, in a while but video games here and there there you go see just a normal mm -hmm. dude and uh yeah. i think one of the most normal but like not normal it was just a really funny video that I saw on the internet internet of you walking over to a fan before a game for a game something I think you know where I'm going with this yeah. asked him for a little bit of a dip that was that was after the game after um, the game okay that was after a winner yeah victory chaw and and, <laughs> and, it, and, I, and I had to explain it to my mom because she wasn't happy um about that seeing that video which the military guys the, the, those guys they asked me if I would take one, and I said after the game, and they go, and you won't come over and get one. So they kind of antagonized me a little yeah. bit to do it. I was like, no, oh, I'm definitely, I'll definitely get over and bum one off you, you know. <laughs> so I went over and, and took it, and someone was filming, obviously, and that went around, and people were like <laughs> commenting, sending me it, saying funny, funny ass things. Victory so. Chaw. That's what we're going to title the video. Victory Chaw. Victory Chaw. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what it was. Take it back to the Sandlot, right? Victory yeah, well, Chaw. Victory Chaw. That's where I got it from. Victory yeah. Chaw. Yeah, when they're riding the merry-go-round. Well, Whatever. was it not? Everybody can't, everybody can't, you can't say no to military members that offer you that, right? Then you just look like an asshole. That's exactly. I wasn't saying no. There was two of them. They're like, good, like, two. And I was like, <laughs> After and they, the one guy's like, you won't come over and get it. I was like, right when that horn ended, I'm like, give me that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, come on. Obviously, even better after a win, right? Yeah. Seriously, yeah. Everything's always better after a win. Did you have an I experience wonder, like the Sandlot though, when they had the child, like your first ever time chewing? Uh, yeah. I, did. <laughs> I was I spun for sure. My first time ever, I was spinning. I had to lay down. I didn't throw up, but I was 
it will get you lightheaded, yeah. <laughs> if you haven't thrown one in before, yeah. But now it's now it's an after game thing for the win. Well, 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 no, no, if my, no, it's not. You know, it was, it was just a one time thing. Yeah, to yeah. clear it, it up. Special, it was a special occasion. The military got the, you know, our servicemen asked, and I came through with the duty. Absolutely, it was yeah. your duty yeah. that day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love so, it. I thought you were going to tell everybody that your special skill they don't know about you is that you know how to spray tan. I don't, I don't, I, I don't want to say I know how I've been, we'll get some bookings of people wanting me to spray them, <laughs> but no, I, I don't, I, I know that I know the ins and outs of like, I, what needs to be done or pre like, what do you guys need to do before spray tan after spray tan, what you must wear. Like, I know that stuff. I could tell you. you, right you can answer the yeah. phone, schedule the appointments, right? I could, I could schedule the appointments, but I don't know if I'm doing the service. <laughs> so for anyone who doesn't know, um, Heather Christian's beautiful girlfriend, she has nude skin in Pittsburgh and I went there to get spray tans. She's the best in Pittsburgh. Um, she's awesome. She's also yes. up for Pittsburgh's 50 finest for the cystic fibrosis foundation. So if you yes. want to donate to that, please tell everyone how they can help her out as well with what she's doing. Cause she has an awesome business. Everyone loves and respects her, but to get selected for this, to help raise money for a cause, like you have to be such a proud, it has to be such a proud boyfriend moment for you. For sure. It's cool. Like she started this, you know, her business a year and a half ago, she worked corporate for years and then wanted to she was sick of it and wanted to get out of it and started it. And um, I think we're both kind of shocked with like, like that's why the dog Hoosier was barking. She walked in and then she had to walk back out because she had another person. Like she was home for a minute and she's gone. But I think we're both surprised with like, actually she knew, she claimed she knew, but I didn't know how busy or how many people got spray tanned. And it's a big it's deal. Good. Yeah, it's crazy. But you can help donate to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation by going to either my Instagram or her Instagram and the links in my bio, it's on my Twitter, um, her Twitter, just our social pages. I feel like that's how we're doing word of mouth. And then um, we have some ideas about different fundraisers that we want to do here in the next coming months. We might be running a golf outing, a Jack and Jill golf outing. Um, it's like if you and your boyfriend want to come. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if I want you to come actually. Listen. <laughs> All right, Maybe I will, your boyfriend I will help publicize. Out. I'll do interviews. I'll do social media. And then I'll just, okay. I'll putt. I'll putt. That, I think that's what we're doing. The guys will hit every shot until yeah. the green. And then the girls have to putt. All right. I like it. I'm here yeah. for it. So we might, that's we're fun. Okay, if I don't get the boys. invite now, I'm going to be upset. Because we will definitely come if we're available. You'll get, you'll get the invite. You'll get the invite. But you, you can't hit another club but the putt. All right. That's <laughs> the rule. Yeah. <laughs> for everybody's safety on the course. Yeah, that's for everybody's safety because we don't have, you know, we, we can't make everyone sign liability wa waivers for being around you. <laughs> okay, deal. <laughs> Absolutely deal. Deal on that one. But that's really exciting. I'm so happy for her and for you guys as well. I love going to see her. She also has an awesome teeth whitening service. So everyone check her out. Um, She mm. is, oh. she literally works her every single hour of the day. So she's always available yeah. and awesome. So definitely check that out and help her. Uh, raise money for a really awesome cause here in Pittsburgh. Christian, I really appreciate you coming on today and yeah. spending some time. Hopefully we can do this again soon. Um, but my last question to you, this is how every guest ends a Beers with Mirrors episode. All right? Ooh, if you're beer. partying with your friends, you've got a beer. All right? You're like, there's a vibe going on. Everybody's drinking, having fun. What's the three songs that you're playing to drink to? Like Either right getting now? the party started. Like, what, what's, what are you putting on? Man, can I go? Can I, can I check my playlist real quick? Absolutely. That's yeah. definitely one. That's definitely one right here. I don't even know how to say this. I'm not going to say that one. I don't know what that. So, uh, I like some Mac Miller. So let's go here. I got a Mac Miller song for you. Mac Miller, the spins. Uh, yes, love it. You already have that on your someone's playlist. Not that one. We've got a Mac Miller one, but not the spins. That's that's Mac Miller legendary. Um. Let's go Party in the USA, Miley Cyrus. Absolutely. Everyone. Put your hands up to be in the song. Everybody knows that song. Everybody. Even if they don't want to sing it, everybody starts singing it. And then, um, man, I'm trying to find. My playlist searches are crazy. Right now, I'm looking <laughs> up. Like, what? Um, 
I'm a big country with... girl. I'm a big like Zach Bryan fan. That's been like my my main music lately is anything that he plays. But I, I like him. Let's go. Um, let's go with. Hmm. I'm gonna throw. In, I'm gonna throw in a Morgan Wallen, Wallen one. Last night by Morgan Wallen. Perfect. We don't have that one. We've got some Morgan Wallen. That's. I think those are great additions. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. See, you're not as bad of a DJ as you thought. You know how to get the party going. I don't even have half those songs. I don't even have those songs downloaded. I like search all the songs that I want to listen to. I I, yeah, I do that a lot too, or like just a random playlist because people make playlists all the time. It's already out there for you, right? I know. That's what I I would just search like Heather's playlist and like, hey, (laughs) what's that playlist we listen to? Let me get that. (laughs) Let me get that. Let me get the plug for the playlist. Yes. Absolutely. Well, Christian, I appreciate you coming on. Good luck this season. Anybody uh, who wants to know more about him, just follow along with the Pittsburgh Steelers and everything they'll be doing um, this season. Christian's out there. He's also very involved with all of the Steelers youth football stuff as well. So it's always mm. great to see you. You just were at Girls Flag Football the other day. So was. you're always making appearances. I, I love it. Why The Girls Flag Football event was unbelievable. Like There were like I was surprised how many girls were out there. Like they, they had like triple the teams is what they did last year. I think it was crazy. It was crazy. That was awesome. What was that? Were cool. you impressed? Like, who were you most impressed with? Um, did you see anybody like really good positionally? Yeah, there was there was a girl for North Allegheny that was like she was tough. Like she was good. She was ca- she was fast. She was catching, running, throwing. A couple girls for Shaler were tough. I mean, there were girls from North Catholic that were good. There were a couple girls on each team that were like, mm-hmm. whoa. They, we they could, could put together like a Pittsburgh superstar girl flag football yeah, team here. Was, this is, I was like, this is a cool, this is a cool thing here. Yeah, cool. it's been cool to watch it grow. So I was excited you got to stop yeah. by. I know firsthand how contagious your personality is at those youth football events and everyone would be so pumped up. So thank you so yeah, much fun. for coming on Beers with Mirrors. Hopefully uh, I'll see you at your golf event and everyone will be wearing a helmet. Kidding. Yeah. I won't be hitting I won't be hitting any balls yeah. but appreciate you fun. everyone remember to donate to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation and thank you so much Christian for coming on yes thank you I'll have a beer next time too I'll perfect have yeah. yeah maybe ice <laughs> maybe we can get icy light to give us some beers for these Pittsburgh podcasts I just ha- I just um I just drank my last icy light on Saturday I don't yeah need a refill what is this <laughs> all right icy light throws the sponsor we're here tag them tag them <laughs> Let's go!